this lesson, we provide an introduction to the use of phasers for describing and analyzing steady state AC circuits. To begin our discussion of phasers, let's consider a standard sinusoidal signal that has an amplitude A that specifies the height of the peaks in the depth of the valleys, a frequency F that specifies the distance between peaks, and a phase phi that specifies where the first peak occurs relative to the origin. With this notation, the frequency has units of cycles per second or hertz. Sometimes, though, we'll specify the frequency in radians per second with this relationship between frequency in hertz and frequency in radians per second. Now, when all of the sinusoids we deal with have the same frequency, it is common and useful to represent the sinusoids as complex numbers, or phasors, where the length, or amplitude, or magnitude of the phasor is equal to the amplitude of the sinusoid, and the phase is equal to the phase of the sinusoid, that is, the angle that the complex number makes with the real axis. The most natural units for the phase is radians, because that's typically the expected units for trigonometric functions in programming languages and calculators. However, it is common in engineering applications to describe the phase with units of degrees, so it's important to always be clear about the units for the phase and to know how to easily convert between degrees and radians. Now mathematically, we represent a phasor as a complex number with an amplitude A and a phase phi, or with a real part equal to A cosine phi and an imaginary part equal to A times the sine of phi. Now for a shorthand notation, we'll often represent the amplitude and the phase like this, and it's important to be familiar with all of the ways to represent a phasor. Now to see one of the most important uses of phasors, suppose we have a sinusoidal signal with an amplitude A1 and a phase phi1, which has this phasor representation, and another signal with the same frequency but an amplitude A2 and a phase phi2 with this phasor representation. Now let's suppose we want to add the two signals. By using some basic trigonometric relationships, we can show that the resulting phasor is the sum of the two phasors, whose amplitude and phase are the amplitude and phase of the resulting sinusoid. Now if we want to scale the amplitude and shift the phase of a sinusoid, we can use phasor notation for that. And we can do that with complex multiplication. That is, to scale a sinusoid by b and shift its phase by theta, we can multiply the phasor by the complex value b e to the j theta. Now most calculators and programming languages have the ability to add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. If, though, you need to at some time do this at a low level, you should remember that when you add phasors, you simply add their real and imaginary parts, and when you subtract phasors, you subtract the real and imaginary parts. When you multiply phasors, you multiply their amplitudes and add their phases, and when you divide phasors, you divide their amplitudes and subtract their phases. In closing, one of the most common mistakes to make when dealing with phasors and circuits is to use the wrong units for the phase. So always check and double check and triple check that you are using the specified units for the phase.